Thank you for joining in. Kansas City, all the way to Kansas City this morning. Totally understood, man. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I 
I like it. So let's let's throw some uh, like a solid bass line on there. These strings are bright, bright, bright. Let's try this. Let's see what we got. Catch the rebroadcast later. It's all good. Just as long as you watch it, man. I appreciate it. Andrew, good morning to you. Let's see here. LaGuardia, New York. Yes, sir. Uh, happy holidays. Same to you, Rodney. Uh, sounded good as uh, usual. Finishing the year strong. Yes, sir. We got to finish strong. Got to finish strong. Good morning, Tanya. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Morgan, Tennessee. Here we go. <laughs> Wait, this is the great man. Thank you. God be the glory. Uh, Melvin, good morning to you, man. So, all right, let's try to put another bass line on here. Uh, let me see. Uh oh, we got a little crackle and popping happening. I don't know where that's coming from. All right. Oh, I see what's going on. All right, let's try this. Feel good. What y'all think? Oh, what's up, man? 
let's do this. Pull some of these hides out. <laughs> What's up, man? See, so I read your name this time. <laughs> Dimitri, all right? All right, let's see here. Man, you good. You good. You right on time. You right on time.
so to speak, just more so playing the songs and that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm knocking some dust off of my hands, if you will. Uh, let's go back. I done missed a lot of comments here. I must have been grooving for a minute. <laughs> Somebody said, add some keyboard. Maybe add some keyboard. C-Dub, what's up, dude? Charles, good morning to you. Uh, let's see here. I done missed some stuff. All right, so let's go back. Charles, the top of the morning to you, brother. Sounds like something the band would play. Uh, the great, yeah, the, like a, uh, a greeting for the visitors, that kind of thing. Yeah, it does feel like that a little bit. Uh, it make folks feel good, make them want, <laughs> make them want to enjoy the service a little better, you know. Uh, Melvin Bell, good morning to you, man. He said, add some keyboard to it. You know, I don't know. This morning, I, I don't know if I ain't feeling the keyboard this morning. I might go back and add some, but right now it's just, I guess it's, I'm being selfish. All about the bass this morning. So <laughs> I agree. You killed that. Let the bass player get some awesome platform around. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that, uh, Tanya. Uh, Tyrone, good morning to you. Melvin, it sounds like you should be on your next album. Well, that might be something we might need to consider there, Melvin. Uh, Anthony, good morning to you, man. Uh, if I ain't already said it, I appreciate it. Somebody, Charles said, that feels good. To me, I, I agree, man. I, I like it. I like the feel of it. If don't nobody else like it, I like it. So Dustin, good morning to you. Uh, what is that? This bass is my birthday present, bro. Let me <laughs> let me have it. Give me give me a few minutes. Just give me a few. I'm gonna send it right to you. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> uh, what is that? So somebody said Merry Christmas, all my low end brother. Merry Christmas to you. What's that? Heidel man. Am I reading that right? Hillman. Uh, you're playing right now. <laughs> I bet it's not cold in your studio anymore. I'm sweating under this jacket. I might need to pull it off. Uh, good morning, man. Fort Worth in the building. So, yeah, I'm having fun. I try to have fun all the time, but yeah, I'm, I'm for some reason this groove just got a little nice little fun thing happening with it. Aaron, good morning to you, man. Philadelphia is in the house. So yeah, we just we just having a little fun this morning, just playing around. Y'all know how we do it. Grooves and motivation. If you're new to this channel for whatever reason, and this is your first time encountering me, I'm Jermaine Morgan, and again, this is Grooves and Motivations. I'm here every Tuesday morning at 7:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and so I just wanted to um, get on here for a little while, y'all. Not gonna be on here. Well, I don't plan to be on here long. I always say that, and I end up being on here like I don't have, but hopefully not. So I just wanted to jump right into it this morning. Rethink. Rethink tomorrow. That's the title of today's topic. Rethink tomorrow. As we kind of close out the last part of this year, uh, El Paso, Texas, I see you. Uh, 
Very much love, the worship team. Much appreciated. Oh, wow, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. He says, watching you help me really bring some love to the worship team. Wow. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so re rethink, rethinking tomorrow. And y'all keep coming. I'll read them. Uh, you keep that up. You're going there. Set your house on fire. <laughs> uh, man, you know, it, 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 every now and again, you got to warm it up. It's cold outside, so you got to warm it up with something. Get some energy. Bring your bring your energy level up, if you will. So rethink your tomorrow. Uh, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? This year, 2020, we got a few days left in this year. This year has been just completely, man unprecedented to say the least like it this has been an interesting year for a lot of people and it's still news is still pouring in some of it's not good news some of it is good news but you would think a majority of it's bad but it's all about the perspective of how how you see everything in terms of how this year really is perspective perception is everything to some person the cup is half empty into the other person. The cup is half full. So it's all about perception, all about perspective, how you see everything. To the musicians that are watching me this morning, uh, you guys know I wrote this book uh, called 10 Ways to Success. And uh, oh, yeah, before I forget, let me go ahead and announce the winner. I've been giving away this book um, to one person every week when I go live. I've been giving away a book. So C. Thomas c thomas studios you have won your book and i will send it to you this week uh i'll follow up with you i got your email so i can get your address your mailing address and uh everybody else should have got their book so far uh that one all you have to do let's not forget at the end of this all you have to do is simply send me an email jermaine at jermainemorgan.net telling me why you want the book is that simple i'll simply select the winner and send it to them. If you don't want to go through all that and you just want to buy your own copy, it's available on Amazon. You can get a signed copy from my website, JermaineMorgan.net. Let's go to the shop tab. Anywho, shameless plug. So I, I wrote this book, 10 Ways to Success, The Working Musician. And the, if you read the back cover, one of the things that I'm saying in this thing, you can become, you could have a successful music career without necessarily becoming famous. I think... One of the, uh, and I see the comments still coming in. I will come back and respond. One of the things I think that's really shook a lot of musicians this year is the fact that it was exposed that most musicians have a one-track mind. And hear me out before people get offended. I think oftentimes we're, you know, trained, we learn to, thank you, Tyrone, I really appreciate that. We tra we're trained and we learn to, do one thing. We learn to become good on whatever instrument it is we're playing in hopes that we will, well, do a number of things. We will gain a good gig or become a good studio musician or, you know, go travel the world with somebody or whatever your ambition is. Some of you guys just simply want to learn an instrument for the enjoyment of the music. And that in itself is totally fine. It's always the greatest reason to want to do it just for the simple enjoyment of the music. That way, whatever comes with it, you know, it is what it is. I'm not moved by it one way or the other. But um, just simply being able to uh, enjoy the music. So, but the, the problem that happens as you begin to develop and you begin to get calls and this becomes a career as opposed to a hobby, the thing that happens, you start looking at from gig to gig to gig. Now you start depending on the next call. If you are exclusively a musician, you start waiting on the next call and now you reach a point like 2020 where those next calls are few and far in between with so many live venues having been shut down this year a lot of things have opened back up for the majority of musicians like major touring musicians and that kind of thing stuff has shut down so what does that have to do with rethink tomorrow well to me the music industry has completely changed Everything has changed. I ain't going to just say the music industry. The whole world has changed, whether we know it or not, whether we choose to accept it or not. Everything has completely changed. And so that means our approach to how we do things must also change. Either you change or you get left behind. Time after time, studies have shown, you know, the people that don't adjust end up getting left in the smoke or left in the dust, so to speak. 
And so you want to be on the cutting edge. You want to be on the, the forward thinking end of what can I do? I sent out an email this morning to my subscribers. You probably already received that if you're subscribed to me already uh, to my uh, website, JermaineMoney.net. Uh, I sent out an email this morning and one of the things I was talking about, finding different type of ways to serve what you do to the public. It's finding different creative ways. If 2020 hasn't shown me anything else, it's shown me different ways in my entrepreneurial journey, how to serve out what I do to the masses, to the public, so to speak. There are giftings, specific giftings that you have that are unique to you that only you can give to your audience, whoever that audience is. And sometimes you have to go and find that audience. But there are a group of people who want what you have. Let me say that again for somebody who missed that. There are a group of people who want what you have. It doesn't matter how many people might already be in the industry and feels like it's already saturated. Everybody's doing this and everybody's doing that. That might be true. But there's a unique thing that you do that everybody doesn't do. And so let me come in a little closer to this camera. There's a unique thing that you do that everybody doesn't do because they don't have your fingerprint. They might, you know, everybody makes, I ain't gonna say everybody, but there are a lot of car manufacturers, right? But there's only like one Rolls Royce. There's only one. And there's only one BMW in terms of that has a logo. Each car has its own personal identity. All of these cars will get you from point A to point B. And of course, all these cars differ in price range. But the fact of the matter is people have choices and they have options based on their personal feelings, based on their personal beliefs, what they feel will work best for them. And so what they do is they purchase a car based on that relationship, based on that belief, based on that perception. So the same thing when it comes to you and your brand or your thing that you do as a musician, people are coming to you for a certain thing, for a certain reason. So don't concern yourself with the fact that, man, this person over here is doing this and, and man, that's a phenomenal musician or that's a dope bass player. And he just started uh, giving lessons and that, that kind of thing. And so I don't know if I want to give lessons because such and such is doing it. That's, that's cool that such and such is doing it, but they can't touch everybody in the world. They want to, but they can't touch everybody in the world. So with that being said, and knowing the fact that there are almost 8 billion people on the planet, something that all is well, Tim, I see you. Um, knowing that there's this many people on the planet, a friend of mine told me this a long time ago, and I might've shared this here before. He said, man, if a cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the Lord, that means there's enough for everybody to eat, figuratively and literally. You know what I'm saying? There is enough in business for everybody to eat. You don't have to worry about, well, Jermaine is doing this. or Jermaine, You know what I'm saying? You don't have to look at that and think, well, I can't do such and such because this person is doing it or that person. You don't have to think about it that way. You just have to rethink how it is you're serving what you're serving Yeah, that scared me a little bit. You have to rethink how you're, uh, hopefully the Wi-Fi doesn't shut off because that flashed as well, but I apologize in advance if it does. Uh, you have to rethink how you're serving. Uh, and I didn't say none of that track, so hopefully it's not gone. Hopefully I can recall it, but we'll see. Uh, you have to rethink how you're serving what you're serving to the public. You have to rethink it. That's how. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. That kind of threw me off. I don't know why we had a power outage just now. Um, but you have to, you have to literally rethink how you're uh, serving what you're serving to the public, and be creative about the way that you go about doing it. Because you know, it's just so many ways we can go about doing it, and I think we get stuck on just this one way. Uh, some schools are looking for music teachers, whether it be music theory, bass instructor, music appreciation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like there are a lot of opportunities for us out there as musicians. If you're qualified, you have credentials. And one of the things I, I talk about in the book is like you can start in your community. One of the things I learned in college, uh, uh, one of the, one of the, I was going to say one of the few things I learned, but they tell you as an artist in the music business, 
always establish yourself locally first. Always establish yourself locally. Now you have uh, the benefit of establishing your own brand, your own name and that kind of thing with social media, which is great. But it's still something about establishing yourself locally or within a local community type deal and you building that respect, you building that following, a real organic. The idea is to build an organic following that at the end of the day, you have a core group of people who know who you are, who support what it is you do. So if you are trying to give lessons and that kind of thing, I tell my students, like, you know, no matter what level you're on, you know, you know something that somebody else doesn't know. So you can take that, good morning, Eugene, you, you can take that little piece of information that you know, that little bit, like, man, I got a long way to go. I got a long way to go. But I'm sharing the information that I've learned already with people that I know don't know this much. You know, the little bit that I know there are some people who don't know that much. So I can take that little bit of information and share it with somebody else. And if you can figure out how to package that thing, start sharing that. Your thing might not be giving lessons. If you're not a people person, that might not be the best move for you. Or on the flip side, if you need to become a people person, that might be something to help you in that area. Now, it's all about kind of knowing where you're supposed to be. There are areas that we can grow in as it pertains to self-development. If you're not a people person, you're a little bit more reserved, that kind of thing. Well, you might have to go a different route. But one of the things about being an entrepreneur, if you're not a people person, you got to figure out how to become a people's person or at least have a good sales team that can sell your product for you. That way you don't have to be the face of the brand. But most of us as entrepreneurs who are independent, and I call you even as a musician and entrepreneur because you're building your own personal brand in some way, form, or fashion. Because at some point, whatever that gig you're on, at some point, you're going to probably have to find another gig. I'm just being honest. At some point, nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Unless it's something that you created that you're regularly maintaining. At some point, even if you're playing at the church, like, I've been playing at this church for, for 20, 30 years. Well, all that needs to happen, even though you have a good relationship with the pastor and the staff, all that needs to happen is for, God forbid, that pastor or something to pass away. And now they hire another pastor, probably a younger pastor. Now, he comes in with a different vision. He comes in with a different mindset, a different agenda. And all of a sudden, you're not working for his vision anymore. So he might need to replace you to find a younger fit, to find a different look for where this place or this, this venue is going now. And you're not the perfect fit for that anymore. Not because you're not good enough, not because... You're too old. It might you not, might not be the one that they jail with, and so now they go in a different dis, diff, direction. Sorry, and so you can't put all of your eggs in that basket of that one gig. It's, it's good to have multiple streams of income. So figuring out ways to do that as a musician, I think, is something that we don't talk about. Everybody wants to know how to get dope, how to play licks, how to build speed how to arpeggiate a whatever chord and all this kind of stuff, which is sweet because that's why you're here. You want to learn how to play an instrument, not get financial advice. So, so I'm not here for that. But I, what I am what I am telling you is don't put all, regardless of what you do, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. And if you're trying to pursue uh, some type of musical career, you can still pursue a musical career with having multiple streams of income through music, finding more than one way. So it shouldn't just be all about your playing and that's it. Meaning like, all right, I'm a gigging musician and that's it. That can't be it. 2020 has shown you that can't be all that you do. I mean, you have session work that you could do. A lot of you guys are good musicians, but you don't own an interface. You don't own a computer where you can record yourself from home. You haven't even started recording yourself. I've talked about this before. You have to start working on that kind of stuff because what if somebody likes your playing that you do on these gigs and all of a sudden they want to call you for this session, but they don't have a studio and they're expecting for you to record it remotely, but you don't have a setup. Not only that, you don't know how to run Pro Tools, Logic, you know, Studio One, Cubase, whatever y'all use. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't know how to run it. That's something that you need to add to your arsenal. 
you know, figuring out how to do this. And to me, that's golden right now because having an interface is everything. Being that everything is moved to social media, everything is moved to these online platforms. Not everything, but mo a majority of stuff has moved to this. You want to be able to keep up, in a sense, keep up with the times, keep up with what's going on, making sure you're keeping your skills sharp and making sure you're doing the necessary things to move you forward. So you don't miss calls, you don't miss opportunities to do whatever. Because just the simple act of learning how to record myself and learning how to do uh, work a camera, you know, learning how to be in front of the camera, learning how to edit videos and that kind of thing, it has created several streams of income for me. Just learning that other skill set outside of being able to play and being able to know all of my skills. Learning several skill sets. So it's all music related, but there are several avenues that, that stream in as opposed to having one stream and then that stream get blocked up and now I'm up the creek. Like, no, nah, you have several flows that come in. So now you well if this one gets stopped up well i got two or three more that's coming in they might not be flowing as fast but they are flowing a trickle beats no water dropping just think about that for a second having a little trickle in it beats having nothing a little bit of progress beats a whole lot of nothing <laughs> you know, what's uh what's the song what's the bill with us i think it's bill with us nothing from nothing leaves nothing huh yeah you got <laughs> you gotta have something so it's like you want to be able to provide some source of, of something else outside of your playing. So that way you're not staking your whole musical existence as a musician on this one gig or this one situation or this hope that maybe this person calls me. That person could die. I'm just, I hate to say it that way and be that blunt, but I've seen so many musicians that, that race after trying to get this dream gig but when you get there, it's not what you thought it was going to be. So now you're stuck in a situation that you don't want to be in because your perception of the thing on the outside looking in was a lot better than what it was when you actually got into it. So now you're stuck into something that you don't want to do. And you ain't nobody wants to be there. When you're stuck in an idea, you're stuck in a place that you don't want to be, but you're afraid to move because if you're like me and like I was for many years... Everything is riding on you, staying where you are, your whole family, your whole livelihood. Everything is riding on that consistent check dropping every week or every two weeks or every month or whenever you get paid. You know, everything is riding on that. So I can't make a move. I can't be creative. I can't explore other options because everything is riding on this one thing. And if that falls through, oh, it's a curtain call for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. So how do we get to that point that I'm talking about? It starts, in my opinion, it starts through self-development. It starts through self-development. I'm reading this book. Uh, I want to recommend this book to you guys. I just started reading it. Um, the Richest Man in Babylon. This is an old, old book. I think it was written in like, published in like 1926 uh, by George S. Clayson. Uh, the Richest Man in Babylon. And just... Opening up, and like I literally got this book this weekend, and I read the first chapter yesterday. But the idea, if some of you guys haven't read this book yet, uh, there's this guy that opens up telling the story of this guy who's sitting on the wall. It's kind of distraught. He's sitting on the wall, and this guy is a chariot builder. He builds, this is like during the time, I guess this might be a fictional story, uh, just based kind of during the time of the, the great city of Babylon or whatever. And so, you know, the Tower of Babel and all that stuff. So this guy sitting on the wall, he's a great chariot builder. He builds like really crazy chariots. And so he's sitting on the wall, just kind of distraught, just watching the times pass. And they, they're giving you a, a background of the, the mindset of this guy. As he's sitting on the wall and just staring into space. And it's like, he's not finished with his work, but he's just kind of sitting there on the wall. And, and it shows the glare of him looking back at his wife and she's looking at him just sitting there like, dude, you're not finished. You're not done working. What are you doing just sitting around like, like you sweet? So his friend comes up to him. His friend walks up to him and apparently there's a banquet or something going on uh, this night. 
And his friend asked him, man, let me hold, basically, let me hold some money. I'm going to paraphrase it. He was like, let me hold some money, man. Let me hold $200. <laughs> that ain't what it said, but I'm paraphrasing. So, and he's like, man, you know, I can't do that. Even if I had it, I'd have to use that to take care of myself because I, I don't got no $200 to give you or two, two pieces of gold or two pieces of silver. I don't have that to give to you. And his friend is like, what? Like, dude, come on. Like, you don't have that? And so now they enter into this conversation. I'm making a point with this. They enter into this conversation talking about the fact that his friend is a musician, by the way, and he plays the lyre. So I guess that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, his friend is a phenomenal musician as well. And this dude is a phenomenal, uh, you know, chariot builder. But they are both broke. They are both broke. They are excellent at what they do. But they are both broke. They Neither one of them have money. And they're living basically from check to check, eating the lowest of the low. And they're not living like kings in the city, in a city where there is a king, where there are rich people. And he's building chariots because obviously the slaves and the, the poor people walk around, but the people who have the money uh, ride around on chariots. So he's building the thing, but, you know, he's not able to partake in what he's building on. And just like the musician, he's playing for wealthy people and all this kind of stuff. But even that, he can't afford this uh, particular lyre that he wants that costs a lot more money. Like, if I could get that, and if I could play this particular instrument, and everybody could hear how good I am on that particular instrument, even the gods would rejoice at how great I am. This like this is the, the musician friend talking. So they get to talking to one another and, and just wondering, like, why is it that these people have and we don't? We work hard. We do all of this stuff. You know, and at the end of the day, we don't have anything. So forbid, God forbid, our sons be just like us, not having anything just like us. We're working. We're putting in the time. We're putting in the effort. We're doing all of this stuff. We're working. And we don't have anything to show for it. But this guy here, the uh, musician friend thinks of uh, apparently the richest guy in Babylon, so to speak. He's riding around on a gold chariot. He mentions his name. He's like, you know what? That guy, I consider him a friend. The reason why, unlike the other people that pass by, that got money, they don't speak to the common folk. This dude, he makes a point to speak. He makes a point to wave as he's passing by on his chariot. Makes eye contact with you. He talks to you, that kind of thing. So I consider him like a friend. And I just wonder if he would be willing to share the information about how it is He's so wealthy. How it is he's able to ride around, you know, in his golden chariot, that kind of thing. Oh, he's like, yeah, I like to talk to him. And the other friend's like, nah, man, you don't get it. Even if you took that pack away from him, you wouldn't take the wealth away from him. He would still be wealthy. If you snatched a little purse, they call him a purse. If you snatched his little purse off his side with all that money in it, you wouldn't have his wealth. Because this guy has income. He has money coming in. An endless supply of money always flowing into him. So if you took that little bit away from him, it wouldn't bother him at all. That'd just be a little bit of money gone. Because there's always something coming in. That's not the source of his wealth. He has wealth coming from another source. So we should talk to him and figure it out. Because I'm sure he's passing the information down to his son. So it, the chapter ends with them basically making their mind up. To go and talk to them. that we are in the position that we are in because that's what we pursue. And what I mean by that and what the story means by that, the musician set out to be a really skillful musician and he achieved that. He became one of the most skillful musicians around there, like probably the best of the best during that time. And the, the chariot builder set out to be a great chariot builder and he succeeded at that. Because that's what he went after. That's what he learned. I'm pretty sure he got around people that showed him how to fine tune his work, how to probably like shape the gold and do all of those kind of things, how to get the wheels just right, how to get, you know, probably having the trim in there and putting little screens and stuff in the chariot, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm being extra, but y'all know what I mean. He learned all of these skills and I'm pretty sure they got around somebody who helped him to become the great people that they are at their craft, at what they do. But the problem is, that's all they studied. They studied how to be great at what they did, but they didn't go back and study how to develop 
wealth. They didn't go back and study money management. They didn't go back and study all these different things, financial literacy that it takes to grow income. So what you have now in modern days is you have a whole bunch of skillful, broke people. And then show for it. And we think it's unfair because if I'm this good, then people ought to pay me. Sounds good. Sounds fair. But everybody is not fair. Life is not fair. And, and I heard this quote by Jim Rohn. You don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you deserve. Basically, when you put in a certain amount of work, when you look for something, what's the what's the uh, the verse? Uh, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened to you. We think just because we have a good gifting, and the scripture that says, you know, your gifting will bring you before great men. Yeah, it will. But here's the thing. What do you do when you get before those great men? My gifting brought me, I, I'll use myself, I'll put myself on front street. My gifting, um, years ago, I had a meeting with someone while I was able to be a fly on the wall in the meeting. You know, I didn't have a meeting. I was there at the meeting. And I was there at the table with some very powerful men. You know, they were like over this big marketing distribution. I won't name which company it is, but I had the pleasure of being connected to somebody because of my gift. And it brought me to the table with these great men. But when I was sitting at the table at the time, because of my ignorance, I had no value to add to the conversation. I had nothing to even base uh, my relationship with these guys to justify even getting a number or an email for these dudes. Like, so I had nothing of value to offer once I got there. My gifting, in fact, brought me before great men. But when I got in front of the men, the great men, I wasn't ready for the opportunity because I hadn't prepared for it. Your ignorance sometimes can hold you back from promotion, from opportunity. You could come right there to the door of it. The door can be open. You could be sitting at the table eating breakfast with a potential promotion, but if you're not prepared for it, you will miss the opportunity because you didn't study that part. You studied how to be dope. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody. You got to think for tomorrow. You got to think towards your tomorrow. You got to prepare differently. So when that opportunity presents itself, you don't blow it. Because I didn't even realize, this is the sad part about it, I didn't even realize how the opportunity I had later. It was years later and I'm sitting here kicking myself. I'm like, man, I'm sitting here sitting at the table with these people that could have probably done X, Y, and Z for my career had I been ready. But I wasn't ready. I couldn't even introduce myself. Hey, I'm such and such, and this is what I do. And I'm actually really good at what I do. I didn't have the thought to make that thing. And I know everything happens. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm completely aware that everything happens in the, in the right season. Everything happens in the right time. But sometimes it's possible that we can miss certain seasons and we can miss certain opportunities simply because we're not prepared when the opportunity comes. We're not prepared mentally. Uh, we're not prepared emotionally and, and just in so many other ways. Sometimes when it comes to your plan, you're not prepared uh, when it comes to being a musician. So an opportunity presents itself and you bomb. Because you didn't prepare properly. You didn't properly prepare for this opportunity. So now you just bombed the whole gig. I had it happen to me. You know what I'm saying? You took it lightly. You took the situation lightly. So now when you had the opportunity to do this thing that could have moved you forward or could have got you a call for something else, you didn't take it serious. You didn't prepare. So now you blew that opportunity. So you got to wait for it to come around again. You got to wait. So it's better to go in this thing... The, what it said, I'd rather be prepared for not, uh, sorry, I'd rather be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than have an opportunity and not be prepared for it. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready, in other words. You stay ready. You educate yourself. The this, this stuff that I'm giving you, I'm telling you stuff that I didn't know. I just, the reason why I'm so passionate about sharing this stuff with other people 
uh, other musicians that are coming up and some people that may be even over me, is you just, you don't know what you don't know. One of the biggest setbacks I had when I moved to Atlanta uh, and became a musician here, now, I grew up in Mississippi, I grew up in basically what we call the Bible Belt. I wasn't allowed to listen to, you know, secular songs and a lot of stuff growing up. I snuck and listened to some stuff like everybody, but I wasn't allowed. We didn't grow up. I didn't grow up listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. <gasps> you know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up listening to Donny Hathaway. I didn't grow up. The first time I got asked about Donny Hathaway, I was in a session and a, a great producer, uh, Daniel Moore, I'll never forget that. He referenced this Donny Hathaway song, and I didn't know who or what he was talking about at all. And so he wanted me to possibly play on this record, and I couldn't play the part because I didn't know who he was talking about. So the opportunity was there. I was in the right room with the right people, but I wasn't prepared because I didn't know. And a lot of times it's not your fault, but that's not an excuse. Now when you have the opportunity to do something about it, you don't go on complaining about what you didn't know. Now you do something with the opportunity. What do I do now? I'm down, down here in Atlanta. I'm talking 12 years, 12, 13 years. Dang, it's been longer than that. 14 years ago, I'm here in Atlanta. I'm new. I didn't grow up listening to all these songs, all these secular songs. I'm getting these calls to go play these gigs. What do I do? Sit there and complain about I didn't learn all these songs? Or do I start learning them if I want to play these particular gigs? I have a choice to make. Either I can learn this stuff and play the gig, or I can go find something else to do. I don't have to learn this stuff. Like now, I don't play those gigs anymore. Uh, but at the time when I was needing to grow as a musician, it was necessary that I learn the music. It was necessary that I stop making excuses. I don't know how to play on uh, Spain by Chick Corea. Well, you better go learn it because they're going to play it on that gig. <laughs> it's, that, it's that simple. I got to go back and remember it now, but I had to learn the song. I heard other people play it and kill and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to learn that song too hard. All right. Well, when it comes time for you to play this gig, you're just going to be sitting there looking embarrassed when they call that song out because they play it. Whether you know it or not, they finna play this song. So you about to go down in flames, in other words. You, you, you just about to go down in flames. So the moral of that point is don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Once you have the opportunity to embrace and to move on this information, do something with the information that you have. I'm giving this information to you. Maybe you didn't know before today. Maybe you didn't consider the fact as a musician that I need to be doing something else. I, I need to be finding another way to package what it is I do. I'm good at a lot of other things other than just playing the bass. Matter of fact, I'm dope at being a bass tech. I am not talking about myself. I'm being, I'm making an example. You might be like a super dope bass, bass tech, meaning you can go through this thing like you know, you might not can play it as well as you want to, but you know how to go through this thing and make it sound sweet. You might be dope at that. That might be something for you to be looking into expounding upon. You have giftings. Everybody has different giftings. I can create music. I can sit here, come up with songs all day, every day. So that's a gifting of mine. So the thing is to figure out what that gifting is and, and, and embellish it. Like really dig into it. Figure out how many different ways I can expand this. Like don't just be boxed in one way. Well, I got to see about getting a placement on a song for an artist. That might happen, it might not happen. You need some definites that you can set up whether or not these possibles happen or not. Like, all right, I know I can guarantee I can do this and I can send this out to the masses. And my odds of this landing are more like, you know, uh, nine to one as opposed to 10 to one. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a chance I can serve this out to the masses and I can get 40 people to, to purchase this particular thing as opposed to just sit here on a song for the next six years and hope Beyonce or somebody pick it up one day. Nah, nah, it's a better way. It's a better way to do it. So just in case that's your mindset, I'm going to get this recording gear and I'm going to record my first song and I'm going to try to find somebody who can get this song to such and such. That might work. But the biggest thing is when success is... There's another quote I want to say. Uh, it says, when the end comes, let it
find you conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one. So like when, when that success is ready to find you, let it find you doing something else. Let it find you moving on to your next project. Like, all right, let me, I got to make time for this success that's finally caught up to me. The success that I've been looking for, I got to make time to do this now because I've been so busy getting so much other stuff done. I barely had time to do this little thing that I was hoping to do 10 years ago. Like I barely got time for it now because I'm so busy conquering these other mountains. I'm not just sitting in the valley waiting on somebody to call me. I'm climbing another mountain. As soon as I get off of that, I'm going to go to another. You know what I'm saying? We don't just sit there. We celebrate for a while and we keep it moving. We keep it moving. I think the 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 biggest uh, enemy to success, this is another quote, the biggest enemy to, su to success is your last victory. Like the last time you've done something, if that's all you want to talk about, it's going to stop you from moving forward and doing more things because you are still stuck on yesterday. What you did yesterday, man, I remember, <laughs> you know, those people, man, I remember when I was in high school. I remember when I was this. I remember when I was that. That's great. I'm glad you did that. But what mountain are you conquering now? Because what you did yesterday is gone. It matters a little bit to you. It's your legacy's sake, but as long as you're here, there's more in you to do. As long as you're here, I don't care how old you are watching me right now. As long as you're here, there's more for you to do. Move forward. Don't stop. At your last success, keep moving. Keep moving because your last success can become your biggest hurdle because you don't think you can top that last thing that you did. And you'll find out as you keep moving, you got more. You got more in you. So my lesson or my thoughts to you today is that you have more. Push beyond what you thought was possible. That last gig that you might have got let go from, it might have been an opportunity for you to start looking to do something that you were supposed to be doing anyway. But you were stagnant sitting on that gig thinking that that was the best they had to offer just because they was giving you a check that you've never been paid before. Imagine getting to the end of your life and standing there. And I said this before, and this is not original, but I love it, so I'm, I'm using it, I'm stealing it. Imagine getting to the end of your life and standing there and God introduces you to the person that you were supposed to be and you look nothing like him. I'll wait. You look nothing like them in appearance, in accomplishments, in purpose, in goal, all of this kind of stuff. The person that you were supposed to be, you don't even favor them. Y'all have nothing in common because every opportunity that was presented to you while moving through this life, you ran away from it because it didn't look like something that you wanted. But that was actually the real person you were supposed to be trying to connect with you each time. And you rejected it because you didn't recognize it. Oftentimes, your next promotion or your next uh, victory or your next thing doesn't look like what you think it should look like. It doesn't look like what you think it should look like. So we will run away from it. I had no intentions when I was younger. I, I didn't want to do nothing close to nothing, teaching nobody, nothing. I had no interest in it. When I went to uh, uh, my community college, I went for performance. Uh, and then I, went, I transferred to university and, and you know, went to studio stuff and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, when I was in school, I was like, uh, you want to go to education? Man, no, I don't want to do none of that. I have no interest in that at all. And now, Jermaine Morgan bass lessons. Like, really? That's what you're doing? Because it didn't look like, for me, at the time, it didn't look like what I thought my life should look like. And come to find out, the whole time, I naturally love sharing information with people. I naturally love to do it. But the idea of doing it didn't look attractive to me because my mind hadn't yet matured to the place that it needed to be. So many years I probably ran away from success or being at a different level level of success simply because it didn't look like something that was for me. And I can guarantee you most of the people 
who are doing great things now. Not all, because some people are doing exactly what they set out to do. But there are some people who became super successful at something that they never imagined that they would ever be doing, but they absolutely love it. They absolutely love it. And that vehicle of success gave them the means by which they were able to really attain the thing that they really wanted to do by taking the long road, by taking the winding road instead of taking the straight path that everybody else is on. So get off of that path. If you are a musician, if you are a person that's watching me and you're following the broad path that everybody else is taking, you might have to go where there is no path and leave a trail. That's not original <laughs> either. But these quotes, I love them because they remind me of my own journey. Go where there is no path and leave a trail. Leave a trail behind so somebody else can know how to follow you. Somebody else can know how to do this thing. Man, I ain't nobody that I know of in my family wrote no book. You heard how I said that? Ain't nobody in my family wrote no book. There's a lot of people who are going to do it. Of course, I said a lot. There were a few people who were going to do it. I have some pastors. I have this and I have that in my family. But having a person who has pursued their dream or what they want exclusively and then give up on it at some point, I don't have a personal references for that. So I don't know what that looks like personally. So there was no path. I'm having to carve out a trail for my children and people after me to follow because I believe that what I'm doing matters and I believe that it's important enough to leave a trail for somebody else to follow. All right, so I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna read some of these. Uh, I'm gonna read some of these comments because if I don't, I'm gonna be here for another hour. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, all right. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me go back. Melvin Bella said, "This is something." Good morning to you. If I hadn't already spoke. Uh, Tim, good morning to you. I think I spoke to you. Some schools, uh, we, I read that one already. I didn't lose you guys. All right, so um, Marcus Bay said, I never lose. This is a quote. I never lose. Either I win or I learn. Mandiba. Matt Mandiba. I, I guess that's how you say that. Same. All right, so let's go on down. Eugene says, exactly. I tell my sons that this is the difference between men and boys. Men stay ready. Boys get ready. <laughs> yes, sir. I like that. Yes, sir. Kishan's kingdom. People be looking at me crazy. I think I missed the other part. I, I got you, man. Uh, Chris Hall's a preacher, bishop. <laughs> Good word. Creatives can create new opportunities. Absolutely. Listening to you brings memory. All the Mandela quotes. Uh, just awesome, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. There is no passion uh, to be found playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of living. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, why settle? Why, I mean, why why settle? If we're going to do this, if we get one shot at this thing, we might as well give it all we got. I mean, that's all you have. You might as well give it all you have. And, and while at it, pursue purpose. I, I talk a lot about this. I, I learn a lot from listening to the teachings of Dr. the late Dr. Miles Monroe talk about purpose. He says, uh... Uh, what's the quote? And uh, ignorance of purpose produces an abuse of talent. Being ignorant to what your purpose is, you will waste a lot of time with your skills. You will literally abuse your skills, your giftings, your abilities, because you don't know what the purpose is for them. You don't know what the purpose for your abilities are, so you waste a lot of time when you could have been helping a lot of people. You could have been moving the needle, helping move somebody else forward, moving yourself forward, moving your family forward. There's a, um, a quote I put in, even in the email, Zig Ziglar has this quote, that help enough people get what they want, and you'll get what you want. Find a way to help enough people to get what they want, and in return, you'll get what you want. So once you finally start pursuing purpose and adding value, I think that's the biggest thing about even being here. It's, it's a market term in terms of uh, adding value to others. You know, big businessmen and everybody else practice this. 
But the thing, the principle behind it is loving people higher up than yourself. Esteem, the good Samaritan, that whole thing, being able to help lift somebody else up. That's the idea. That's the central idea behind it. Being able to help somebody else up. And in doing so, you will reap what you sow. By putting good in the ground, good comes back up out of the ground. You know what I'm saying? You put a good seed in the ground, you're going to get a good harvest from something. Oftentimes, I stop when I'm on the road. And I learned this from my stepdad, uh, Paul, if he's watching. But this, this idea that if I pass somebody on, granted, I can't stop and help everybody. But I learned this principle at an early age. Stop and help people. When you pass them on the street, you got time. Stop. You see somebody that's out there and, you know, granted, there are people that want to take advantage of you. And I know women have to take more precautions. So I'm, I'm careful of how I say this. You know, if you're a woman, you definitely want to be more precautious. But as a man, you know, I've made it a point to stop and help as many people as I can that I see uh, who need help on the side of the road. And I'm not saying that so I can, you oh, look at you. No, I don't mean that. The reason why I do it is because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about my wife. I'm thinking about my kids when I'm not around. And they have some car trouble or something happens to them and they're stranded out there. I want somebody to do the same for them with good intentions, not trying to get over on them, not trying to get something out of them, but simply because of the fact that they know somebody is in need and they want to help. And I know if I continue to sow those seeds, when the time comes, they are going to reap, not just me, but they are going to reap the seeds that I planted because, man, your dad will stop and help everybody. So there's no wonder why people are always stopping and helping you. I want those seeds to not only benefit me, but the generations after me. So that's almost in every area. I want to do good to people. I want to, I want to be good to people. I want to help and add value to people because I'm thinking beyond my children, my children's children. I want them to be helped because of seeds that have been planted, not cursed because of things that have been planted years back and people didn't deal with bad things like no nah, i want the good things to come up you know what i'm saying so you put good down good comes back up i seen another comment pop up as i wrap up i uh what is that uh eric says good job jermaine the base community as you know is very big i try to support them all i appreciate that eric i appreciate you taking time out to even watch this video uh, Melvin said, gotta go catch the rest later. Appreciate you for being here, Melvin. I'm about to jump off anyway. I, again, I just wanted to share some thoughts. If this has been helpful for you, do me a huge favor. Give this a thumbs up. If you're still here, if you're still around watching, uh, give me a, 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 a like for this video. Share it if you think it's helpful for somebody. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what part was helpful to you in this video. And I see y'all uh, dropping the likes. I really appreciate that. Let me know what part of this was helpful to you. What part has you thinking? Like, what are you thinking differently? How are you going about looking at tomorrow differently? What will you do? You don't have to give me your business. But this, did this inspire a thought for you? Did this invoke something in you? Did this wake something up in you that says, man, you know what? I've been kind of sleeping on myself. I've been sleeping on my own ability. I got more. I got more in me. I got more to give. I got more that's in there. It's like I'm always chasing this guy. I'm always chasing, uh, who is it? Tim says, motivation to expand my business. Awesome, Tim. So I'm, there's this guy in my mind. He looks just like me. He plays bass and do all this stuff. But I'm always chasing him because he looks like me, but he's not in the same place that I'm in. He's not in the same set, uh, the same mind frame. He's not in the same place financially. He's not in the same place uh, integrally, if that's a word. You know, as far as integrity, he's in a higher place. He's in a higher state of being. He's he's better relationship with God, better relationship with his family, better relationship with his children. All this stuff. That guy, I'm, I'm chasing him every day. I'm chasing him every day. And who that guy is, he's the better version of me. That's the dude that I'm chasing every day. I'm chasing that better version of who I know I'm supposed to be. I know I'm chasing that better version of who I'm called to be. That person, not the one that I am today, but the one that I want to be tomorrow and the day after that. I'm constantly chasing, not somebody else, not some, 
You know what I'm saying? And I don't want this to sound self-centered. I'm saying that meaning, hopefully most of you guys understand. I'm saying that meaning I know that there's a better version of me. And daily I'm peeling away these onion layers to get to that better version of who I am, who I'm supposed to be. That's what I want to do. I want to live full and die empty. I want this thing to be completely emptied out. When they put this shell in the ground, I don't want to be nothing else in it. I literally, we vacuumed everything out. Every single thing that was in here, I got it out. So the day that I stand before God, and he, figuratively speaking, he introduces me to the version of myself, we're twins. That's what I want. That's what I want for you. When you finally meet the version of yourself, y'all are twins. You know what I'm saying? Y'all twins. Uh, let's see here. Aaron says, always love your lectures. Very informative. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. I never thought of them as lectures. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Music for Jesus Sonia says, no matter your career choice, financial literacy is a must. Your personal finances must be on point or it will bleed into your uh, your business finance and then ultimately have a negative effect on productivity. Listen, you can say that again. I know that oh too well. Stay safe. You're brilliant and an artist as an artist and more important as a human being. True message of hope. So thanks. You made my day brighter. Thank you for that, Marcus. Appreciate that. Uh, don't make excuses. Make progress. Absolutely. Eric, thank you for that. Everybody, man, for the comments, for the feedback. Let me know that this uh, has been motivating and inspiring and hopefully encouraging to you all you know that's why i get on here on tuesday mornings not to just goof off because i ain't got nothing else better to do with my time but hopefully to plant a seed in somebody's mind if it's only one person that that seed produces a harvest that brings back 100 fold of what's coming out of me or you know what's already in you that's good like that seed produces something good just to wake you up and to remind you that there's purpose you know what I'm saying? If I can remind one person that there's purpose. I know I got people here that, you know, might be dealing with a lot of things. Marriage, you know, family situations, depression. And if you find yourself in that place, this is just a simple reminder. There is purpose for you. Don't believe the hype. And I don't know who this is for, but don't believe that crap that's going on in your mind telling you, man, you just... You're just a waste. You're just a waste of time. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Nobody wants to hear what you have to play. Nobody wants your little business. Nobody wants this little... Stop letting your thoughts belittle you. Stop letting your thoughts belittle you. Start talking back to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Start talking. Don't let those thoughts run rapid in your mind. You have to take control of the thoughts that's trying to control your mind. I know about this firsthand when you start listening to your own thoughts. It's a bad thing. I don't mean the good thoughts. I mean those, those negative thoughts that enter your mind and you start listening to them and you start giving ear to those thoughts and you start believing the doubt. Anytime that stuff starts creeping up in your head, that's not of God, man. That stuff is not what you should be listening to. You have to talk to those thoughts. Like, Shut up. Stop talking to me. You know, you know what I'm saying? I am great. I am an overcomer. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I don't have to settle for this. I don't have to settle for what you say I am in my mind, what you're trying to tell me based on my current status. You'll never be good enough. Man, you ain't going to be good on this base. Yeah, yeah. You, ain't nobody going to call you for nothing. You're not going to record on nobody's record. Now, who are you, man? Why would anybody call you? All right, well, cool. If you're going to say, I'm talking about the conversation you have with yourself. With yourself. Well, cool. You think I'll never be good enough to record on somebody else's record? Well, I create my own. You know what I'm saying? Have a comeback. Don't just sit and get punked by your thoughts. Have a comeback. Have a comeback that you want to have in your mind. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to let you punk me. You're not going to tell me that I'll never be good enough to play for anybody. Well, I'll play for myself. I'll create my own music. I'll find an audience. Remember this, the, the scenario that I gave you guys? You put the you fix the food and put it out, and the ones who are hungry will come and eat it. You're not gonna stop me from putting the food out because somebody hungry. Somebody wants what I have. Somebody wants the food. Somebody's starving somewhere. So I'm gonna feed somebody. It might not be the person that I was hoping that was gonna get it, but if I keep making this food, somebody's gonna come and eat. 
Keep making your food. Whatever that, whatever that thing is for you. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep showing up. Keep getting up. Keep getting out of the bed. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. When you don't know what else to do, keep showing up. Keep showing up. I can't say it with enough passion, but keep showing up. Because those thoughts that are trying to make you quit are false evidence appearing real. Fear. Don't believe that stuff. Don't believe what is being thrown in your face. Don't believe that stuff that's being thrown in your face. Talk back to it. Stand up to it. Fight. You know what I'm saying? Fight that crap. Don't deal with, don't let that keep sitting in your mind. I know too many people that's checked out of here, and that's why I, I guess I sound passionate about this thing, because there's too many people that have checked out of here because they started believing their own thoughts, their own thoughts. The mind is wickedly deceitful. Your heart is wickedly deceitful. You think you have your best intention in mind? You think you have your best intention in mind? You do until you get depressed about something, and then you become your own worst enemy, destroying yourself from the inside out. You become the self-destructive. You pulling the, the pin on the bomb and throwing it at yourself. When you start thinking thoughts and you don't get rid of those thoughts, the negative talk, the negative little comments that you say about yourself. I've talked about this before. Somebody else needs to hear it. Man, I suck. I mean, I, I, this, all, all this stuff that you say about yourself that's not true, but you keep saying it, your subconscious is buying into all of that kind of stuff. And what you feed will grow. What you feed, feed your kids. Any of y'all got kids, <laughs> you know you buy groceries and them jokers eat up everything in the house. They're getting bigger. So the same thing when it comes to your mind. If you're not feeding yourself, I show you these books for a reason. I talk about the stuff that I'm reading for a a reason. If you don't feed yourself something, the negative information, 2020 has had a lot of negative information, so you got to offset that with something. So you better put something in this tank. You better put something in this tank. Because when, it, when that, that empty hand comes on, you're going to run out of gas. And somebody's going to start talking, oh, look at you. You should have stopped and done that. You should have did that. You passed four gas stations on the way, but man, you so dumb. Look at you. Now you're standing out here. Like all that stuff that starts talking, you got to put something so there's a reserve. So when that empty light comes on, you can just flip on that reserve tank. No, nah, I'm good because I listened to this the other day. I watched this the other day. I read this the other day. So I know I'm straight. I don't have to believe what's coming in my mind right now. If there's no enemy within, it's an old African proverb, there's no enemy within. The enemy outside can do you no harm. If you don't have an enemy inside, the people outside of you can do you no harm. Even if they physically do something to you, they cannot do you any harm. As long as this is sound, God has given us the power of a sound mind. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's given us sound mind. You don't have to entertain those thoughts. If you don't want to, the choice is up to you. I'm done. <laughs> I've talked enough. I think I made my point. So stop listening to that stuff, y'all. Stop listening. If this is for you, stop listening to it. Uh, you know, uh, let's see here. A couple more comments. Chuck says, yes, man. Eugene, if you fall 1,000 times, get up 1,000. Come on, Eugene. That's it, man. Uh, uh, Tanya says, love that, uh, love that saying. Very inspirational, sir. Um, that's precisely why I'm back in school. I know I have more in me. I love music. Thanks for these words of confirmation. Absolutely. Yeah, Tiffany. Uh, difficulties break some men, but make others. No axe is sharp enough to cut the soul uh, of a sinner who keeps on trying one arm with the hope that he will rise even to the end. Man, you, you get me with these Mandela quotes. I like that, man. Thank you, sir. Rodney Jones, thanks, man. Absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. No, no problem. No problem. So, I, again, y'all, I, if I don't do anything else, hopefully you finish 2020 strong. Go into 2021 with a new vision. Go into 2021 really considering what it is you're going to do. Have a plan. Have a plan. I talked about that last week. Have a plan about what it is you want. Even if you don't have it all figured out, even if you don't know how it's going to happen, the how is none of your business. The how is none of your business. 
It's just up to you to figure it out, like in terms of get a plan, get a plan. Because what the one thing that I do, there's a verse that I, I, I like to use. Uh, I have it in my dream list. It says, uh, teach me to do your will, God, and let your good spirit lead me on level ground. There's a promise also in there that says that he will instruct us in all ways with his Holy Spirit. And let's, let's go back to Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So that means I don't have to have it all figured out. I just need a plan. I just need a plan. And if I trust him with my plans, he's going to show me the way I should go. And there's a guarantee also, if I love him, if I mess up along the way, he know how to fix that for me. He being God, he knows how to fix that for me and get me right back on the right uh, track. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So if you are called according to his purpose and you love him, even your mess ups are working for you. So you don't even listen to the, the, the talk like, well, Jermaine, that sounds good if you saying all that. But you don't know what I did this year. You don't know how bad I messed up this year. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love. Do you love God? All right. That's good. So if you call according to his purpose, and I believe you are, do you wouldn't be here. All of these things that even the bad things are working for you. You know, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, class of the Lord. Thoughts to give you hope in the future. Thoughts to uh, prosper you and not harm you. Like all these things, man, there's a plan for you to be better at the end of all this. At the end of 2020, there's a plan for you to be better, not to be worse. You didn't show up on here by accident. So there's a plan for you to be better than you were when you started. There's a plan for you. That's Jeremiah 29 and 11. Like that, there's a plan for you to end up better than you started. So don't get caught up in your mistakes. Don't give too much energy to those. We can we can erase them. We can erase the mistakes. You might have to deal with some of the consequences of those, those mistakes, but that doesn't stop you from moving forward. Move forward. Move forward. Stop looking in the rearview mirror. Go drive. You <laughs> there's another quote I heard. Uh, I think this was Bishop Jace. He said, uh, you'll wreck your car swatting at nets. You ever notice when you be driving something flying around your head? Or well, if you got a whole swarm of gnats, that's distractions. That's letdowns. That's depression. That's all of this stuff. And if you're trying to move forward and all of this stuff is around you and you're so busy trying to swat this stuff, you'll wreck your car because you're focused more on the distraction than you are on keeping your eyes on the road. So keep your eyes on the road. Keep moving forward. You know what I'm saying? One swat is all you need. Get it out of the way. And not let the windows down. Don't keep sitting there swatting at all that stuff. Get that stuff out of your life, whatever the distraction is. Get it out of your life so that you can move forward, so that you can be focused, laser focused on what it is you need to do, on whatever the purpose is for you being here. So you can accomplish that, live full, die empty at the end of the day. I said I was gone 10 minutes ago. Y'all tricked me. <laughs> uh, Chuck said, that's good, man. You're giving me, giving us hope this morning, man. That's that's what it's about. I just got my sermon for the, <laughs> got my sermon for the day. Thank you again. Uh, I have had so epic fail. I had some epic fails, but God's love. That's it. God's love. J Big Josh, morning, man. Morning to you. So, yeah. Again, Albert, good morning to you. Uh, and everybody else is watching, wherever you are in the world. Mike, good morning. And uh, everybody else, man, thank you all for joining in. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the, the thumbs up. Uh, I told you all, we, we, I need those. I need those in my life. Uh, that helps these videos be found by more people. Thank you, man, to the new subscribers. We've hit uh, over 36 uh, 36,000 subscribers. Well, we've been at 36 for a minute, but uh, over the last month, we've hit over, I think, over 500 extra subscribers. So if you're new and you're watching this video, thank you so much. You know, that's crazy. 36,000 subscribers. I know a lot of people have more, 
But hey, I'm I'm grateful for everybody who found something worthy in following me. So if you're new to me, thank you for the subscribe. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I really, really genuinely appreciate you. Do you know anything about the uh, the audio interface? Uh, yeah, it depends on what you're talking about. I don't know. Are you talking about a specific audio interface? God bless Eric Carter. Have a great day, everyone. Um, so Albert, yeah, I don't, I don't know specifically what you're talking about, but yeah, that you need an audio interface in order to record. Uh, so that's hopefully that's what, <laughs> what you meant, but YouTube has a ton of videos. I got to jump off, but YouTube has a ton of videos talking about the best and the worst audio interfaces and the pros and cons and that kind of thing. So yeah, it, based on, uh, uh, Tiffany says, that's amazing. Congratulations. I lost my train of thought that, that quick, Tiffany. But thank you. Oh, you're talking about the subscribers. That show you, like, I'm literally, uh, <laughs> I've already checked out. But thank you so much. Yeah, so the 30, over 36,000 subscribers, we're climbing. Uh, and just let this stand as an encouragement to somebody. I was on YouTube, last, the last story, I was on YouTube for several years. And I think in the year of, man, it had to be 2017, 2018, maybe. I, I was literally, I had maybe like 1,900 subscribers. And in a matter of time, it started growing by the thousands. And I was on YouTube, mind you, for seven years with only less than 2,000 subscribers in seven years, not making any progress. And then all of a sudden, you know, the subscribers started coming. You people started showing up. And I appreciate you for showing up, for you supporting the channel, and you watching my videos. It just, you know, it just started changing. Thank God, you know. And I guess I must have put out some video that somebody liked or something like that. Anyway, the channel started growing and it's been growing ever since. Growing at a steady rate. You know, it's not growing. I haven't reached a million like some people I would love to. But at the end of the day, you know, if, if there's one that's being impacted by what it is I'm doing, I'm super grateful for that. But if there's 30 some thousand that's being impacted, that's even better. So, so I ain't being, you know, I'm not being silly. I, I, I know, uh, you know, it's, it's all important. And that you're absolutely right, Chuck. God's timing. God's timing is perfect. Uh, Tanya, thank you. Oh, yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. I know I won't see y'all again before the Christmas holiday is over. So Merry Christmas to everybody. I almost forgot, man. Thank y'all for that. Merry Christmas. Uh, some good stuff to grab. Um, this is a good gift to give somebody this year for Christmas. 10 Ways to Success. Remember, send me an email. Jermaine at JermaineMorgan.net. Uh, you know, send me an email if you want a book. And I'm going to pick one winner to send this book. I think this is our last week of doing this before the new year. We might have one more. I don't know. I, I got to check the calendar. I'm not looking at the calendar right now. We might have one more week to do this. But, uh, yeah, send me an email. I'm going to pick a winner, send this book to him. Remember, C. Thomas is the winner for this uh, this week. Merry Christmas uh, and Happy New Year. If I don't see you guys again before the new year, I, I'll be back on next week. But Happy New Year to you guys if you don't make it back on next week and uh, be on the lookout if you're subscribed to my um, website there's some new stuff dropping this week some stuff you want want to check out there's some good stuff that's dropping this week if you're already a member of my monthly membership plus or the um, what is it members plus exclusive you you're going to get the new upgrade so you'll be sweet but if you're not to be on the lookout. There's some stuff dropping this week I've been working really, really hard on that I'm excited about sharing. So I want y'all to get it. I want y'all to get all this stuff. So yeah, there's some stuff that's on the website, JermaineMorgan.net. Go get it and rack up and, and get yourself some stuff for Christmas. Treat yourself. Yo treat on me, on on you, or whatever, however it goes. <laughs> however it goes. Y'all, I'm out of here. I gotta go eat something, I'm hungry. So I'll see y'all on next week. Again, thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, share it with somebody. Much love. Peace.